Welcome back to the channel. Today, let's talk a little about the Colt Buntline. The Buntline is actually a Colt single action army with a longer than normal barrel. But just for fun, let's discuss the controversy surrounding the Colt Buntline in general. The first references to the Colt Buntline, or Buntline Special, appeared in Stuart N. Lake's best selling yet highly fictionalized 1931 biography, Wyatt Earp, Frontier Marshal. The book is actually an interesting read if you keep in mind that it's a highly embellished story mixed with inaccurate historical facts. Essentially, the book reminds me of the old adage, never let the facts get in the way of a good story. According to Lake, dime novelist Ned Buntline, who was actually Edward Zane Carroll Judson Sr., whose parents must have been extremely proud of him to give him a name like that. Nevertheless, the name Ned Buntline was merely a pseudonym or pen name Judson sometimes wrote under. Lake wrote that Ned Buntline commissioned five 12-inch barrel Colt revolvers in 1876 and presented them to Wyatt Earp and four other Dodge lawmen, Bat Masterson, Bill Tillman, Charlie Bassett, and Neil Brown. Modern researchers have not found any supporting evidence from primary documentation or even any secondary sources, including Colt's manufacturing archives, substantiating the commission of these revolvers, or even the existence prior to the publication of Lake's book. Historically, there are several timeline discrepancies with Lake's account of the supposed presentation to Wyatt Earp in Dodge City, Kansas in 1876, including one really big discrepancy. At the time the presentations were supposedly being made in Dodge City back in 1876, actual accounts placed Wyatt and one of his brothers in the Dakota Territory prospecting for gold. At that time it really wouldn't have been wise for Earp to be anywhere near Dodge City, seeing that it was reported that he was still under indictment for murder there. According to Lake's book, Earp was the only one who kept his revolver at the original 12 inch length. The four other recipients of the butt lines eventually cut their barrels down to the standard seven and a half inches or perhaps even shorter. Lake's account of those modifications did help smooth over the reason why none of the original Colt bot lines have ever been recovered. But that still doesn't explain what happened to the only existing unmodified example supposedly owned by Wyatt Earp. And here's where it really gets interesting. In an article written by Masada Yu for Guns Magazine, he cited notes written by Wyatt's wife Josephine, in which she briefly mentions an extra long barrel revolver that was one of Wyatt's favorites. He also came across an order for a Colt revolver almost identical by a Tombstone, Arizona bartender by the name of Frank Leslie, also known as Buckskin Frank Leslie. This order actually predated the fight at the OK Corral by several months. Since that article came out, I've actually heard several people suggest that Earp may have actually required this long barrel Colt from Buckskin Frank Leslie. Leslie, by the way, was later accused of murdering Johnny Ringo who just happened to be an enemy of the Earps and Doc Holliday. In the 1993 movie Tombstone, the script writers got it wrong when they depicted Wyatt Earp, played by Kurt Russell, retrieving the Colt butt line from a drawer, just before heading down to the OK Corral to confront the Clanton and McClary factions. According to court records, eyewitness accounts, and even Wyatt Earp himself, he used his 8-inch barrel Smith & Wesson number 3 at that gunfight, which is obviously not a Colt. Earp stated he was given the Smith & Wesson Model 3 American by the Tombstone Epitaph owner, John Klum, who was also Tombstone's mayor, and this is a matter of record. In spite of its inaccuracies, Lake's book went on to spawn a number of popular Western movies. In the 1950s, Colt actually decided to cash in on this by actually introducing the Buntline Special and the Buntline Scout. This Buntline Scout is a 22 caliber version of its bigger brother, the 45 caliber Buntline. This particular one was minted in 1958 and is, of course, fairly collectible. These Buntline Scouts are excellent Colt revolvers. They are extremely well made and very accurate. If you should ever happen to run across one, don't hesitate to add it to your collection. You'll be glad you did. By the way, if you've never read Stuart M. Lake's biography on Wyatt Earp, okay, sorry for the spoiler alert. But like I said, it's still a good read. In spite of all the misinformation surrounding the Earps, it really doesn't change the fact that they were some really hard men that you definitely wouldn't want pissed off at you. 
So until next time, practice often, shoot straight, and thanks for stopping by.